What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State, where we will continue to loot the druggery here in this town. I'm actually going to try and avoid combat from here on out, because combat serves no function in this game. It really, there's no point to it. You don't get XP for it, and you don't really get loot for it either. So, my opinion has now become, why bother? The goal system is how you level up in this game, and so... If you're actually trying to make your character stronger, it's better off just kind of doing random tasks around the house that are listed on your goals list rather than wasting a ton of time being in combat. So we're going to kill what we have to, but from here on out, I'm actually going to avoid combat because from what I've noticed about the way the game works, it seems like it's kind of pointless to get yourself into combat. I don't know why they like biting him so much, but I suppose it's okay. He resisted a lot of damage, so that's fine by me, I suppose. It kind of sucks. I mean, they really seem to focus on the main character. I don't know why that is, but it just seems like the thing that happens over and over and over again. They really, really focus on the main character. No matter who engages combat, too, that's fine because we built our main character as a tank. But had we built our characters like a stealthy rogue or something, I could see the system quickly becoming tiresome as they focus so much on the main character. We'll go over here, grab things out of the laundry machine. Basically, I want to loot the hell out of every single location and never come back. That's the ultimate goal that I'm sort of moving towards when we play this. Let's have a look around. No zombies showed up, weirdly enough. Alright, well, I guess that works for right now. I'm not going to worry about it. I suppose we'll just go back and maybe breach this place. I don't know if it's better to fight some of these zombies over here. I also wish there was a make noise command where you could like shout or something to draw zombies out of their hiding spots. Unfortunately, there's not appear to be one. What I will mention is that engaging in combat against zombies in this game is sort of suspect. So there's two ways that every combat starts out in this game. You're going to either take one character and walk up on them real fast and hit them, but everybody else is going to be stuck out of range so your first turn is going to suck aside from that first person taking a swing. Or you can take the risk of trying to set everybody up, but I've never succeeded at it, and so it allows the zombie to have the first turn, but then everybody's adjacent and ready to go on the next turn. It's kind of which one do you want to go for. Both options suck equally, and so you just kind of have to pick which one you like better. Either you can hope for the one shot at the beginning, or you can get everybody lined up and take a bunch of obligatory damage right up in the front. So it's it's your choice, but there's no way out of it. That's the only two way that, com that I've noticed combat starting in this game thus far. I believe there's a bunch of zombies over here, and I don't know if I even want to go into combat with them right now. Like I said earlier, there is functionally no point in like participating in combat of any type in this game, unless you want the little looting items that you get off like individual zombies. But by and large, I've been... I don't think it matters. Like The stuff you loot off zombies actually is usually not worth the effort anyways, especially if you took damage. Alright, break the door open. Come on, I believe in you. Okay, so this zombie is now going to come over and investigate, which is fine. I will let that zombie do its thing. In fact, I'm going to see if maybe... We're in clear line of sight right now, but the zombie doesn't appear to notice. Very oblivious, very oblivious. Zombie might have a drug problem, or honestly might just have attention deficit disorder or something. And so now the zombie is going to set up right there. Okay, that was weird. Ah, oh, see what... I don't know why she ran right there. I have no clue why that happened. She randomly ran and then got herself attacked. There's a lot of bugs in this game. Like, seriously, there are a ton of bugs. And judging from the overwhelming praise that it's receiving on Steam, it seems like people are kind of glossing over these issues, but they are very much issues. Like, combat opens and drops randomly. So in my, I'm playing another game right now. And combat seems to just, like, engage and drop randomly. So, for example, in one fight... I had three zombies versus three of my guys. The zombie, when I was fighting, we fought the first turn and then combat randomly dropped even though all three zombies had acted and all three of my guys had acted and combat just dropped and then instantly re-engaged so that they got two turns in a row for free. Very weird stuff in this game and nobody seems to be bringing it up in any of their reviews. So in the interest of being honest, I'll bring it up. I'll be like, you know what, there are, there are serious issues in this game. It's no fun losing one of your party members because the enemy decided to do like a double turn thing that, you know, was unaccounted for. Alright, so we took care of that enemy. Let's go ahead and drop combat right now. But yeah, combat seems to engage and drop really, really randomly in this game. Especially if there's both live and dead combatants. So if you're in a com... Wow, that is an annoying-ass sound effect. That is super annoying. 
I never noticed that, but they just sit there and make that noise nonstop. God, I, I understand it from a realism standpoint, but that's that's obnoxious. The sound of heavy asthmatic breathing the entire time. Like, all right, calm down. You're fine. I'm not gonna die. We've got like a magical med kit that we can just like rub on our faces, and it makes me all better. I am going to effectively attempt to get out of the way of this door over here. Did the combat see it? Just did it right there, where the combat opened and closed all by its lonesome. So the, that guy became aware of us mid-combat, and so it closed itself, and then it reopened, effectively giving us a double turn right there. We gotta bait this guy out. I'm not gonna fight him in that tiny room, because with the way he's facing right now, we can only run two guys up on him. So we're gonna step back a little bit. And we're gonna hope, actually. Why? The movement is also strange, too. I There's a couple ways that I would have this change. The first would be that when you take a step, they instantly take a step at the same time, along with the key click. That would be the first way I would change it, because that's the functional reason why what I talked about previously, where you can't set up for combat very well, that's why that doesn't work, is because you move, and then they adapt to where you move afterwards, which means I can move, zombie can see me before they move, and now we just lost an entire turn on all of these guys, because they weren't following close enough. But, movement is very strange too. It seems like occasionally when you click, it deems a location as where the AI is going to go before the click finishes, and it'll like cancel your movement orders and things too. It's happened to me a couple times now. In fact, a lot of times. So, did, how did that guy not see me? Look, I'm right here. I'm in a doorway. Oh my god. I'm gonna let you have the first turn because I hate myself. There we go. The gunners in this game seem to have infallible accuracy as far as I can tell. All of the NPCs with guns never miss. I've never... It's very, very rare that they miss with firearms. You don't have this advantage. Oh good, it's gonna break off combat. So as I try to employ an effective strategy to get this guy out of the doorway, it's just going to quit combat on me. Okay. I don't want to loot the zombie. I want to step into that spot, please. I would like to step into this spot. That would be great. Please? Oh, God. So effectively, there's no way to get in here now without taking more damage. This is another problem. The bodies need to become unlootable so that you can stand in that square. You will come outside no matter how much damage I have to take right now. And so this is another problem, is that... Hey, he missed! I've never seen him miss before. That's good. For me, anyways. I actually, it's... There's a lot of weird things in this game. Like I keep saying, like, it's a fun game, but there are a lot of weird little buggy things that the game does, especially related to the combat system, where combat seems to just open, close, and resume whenever it feels like it without any real rhyme or reason. I Effectively, what he did right there is he stopped combat so that he wouldn't have to come around this corner. Essentially, the AI forced me to come around this corner, which is is weird. You just wasted a bunch of bullets, man. Like, basically, the AI used a exploit that I would have used as a player. Essentially. Ooh, that one's got a Glock? I'll take a Glock, yeah. Probably holds a lot more rounds than some of my other stuff. And before the zombie comes back, heal Joel. There we go. This has been a really, really bad run for us when it comes to healing kits. We've... We've had a rough go. I am, I'm finding that combat is generally not to be a good idea. Like, you just avoid it. Just don't do it. We got some hot sauce over here. Wait, do we get hot sauce? We got peanut butter, jam, and dried fruit. Hmm. Well, we could make a peanut butter and jelly and dried fruit sandwich, I guess. It sounds pretty terrible, but it might be okay. I don't know. I have a thing for dried fruit, and when I say I have a thing, I have a latent hatred for it. Because when you're out in the field... That's like typically everybody brings like a ridiculous amount of like dried apricots or something. And so if you are not tired of dried food by the time you get done with a field excursion, you will be, you will be, to quote Yoda. I think we're good here. Did I get this car looted though? Let's check this car real fast. I'm not so convinced that I got this car. What's that? Pepper spray? Live creatures exposed can be temporarily blinded. Might be useful later on. Might be useful later on. But as of right now, I think I'm going to leave it alone. And let's go see what else we can accomplish today. This has thus far been a very, very unsuccessful day. I'm going to quick save real fast. Because occasionally, when moving in between zones, you're going to notice I'm going to quick save every time I change zones. My game crashes pretty frequently when I switch zones. Like, not every time, but I'd say about it's 50-50. Whenever I switch zones, it crashes. And so, auto saves are going to be happening a lot in this playthrough. Our final checks of everything that we got... I think we did... I didn't want to rotate him. I wanted to go to the next character. There we go. We got a considerable amount of drugs and, like, random stuff. I mean, it's not an amazing run, but we did get some things that are going to be useful in the future. I feel like I may have missed something, but by and large, I guess... Well, we've got codeine. That's okay. 
I guess we can take... We've also got a suspiciously labeled can of soup. Not really talking about what kind of soup it is. Oh, it's stew tang clam chowder. Huh. Stew tang. Is that a Wu Tang Clan joke? Stew. Stew tang clam. It's got to be Wu Tang Clan. That's got to be a joke. All right. Well, I like Wu. Who doesn't like Wu? If you're into rap, everybody likes Wu. They're like one of the rap groups you simply cannot ignore if you're into rap. All right. So we have encampments. Okay. I've got to look around. You'll recall that in the previous episode, we had gotten corn stocks, but then the game had crashed, so it had canceled out our corn stocks. What can you do? I We've got plenty of time left in the day since we didn't have to harvest corn stocks, and so I think it might be a good idea just to kind of like head east and maybe see if we can find anything else around here. Might be a decent idea. Maybe uncover some land or anything that might be useful further away from home. There's an old church. Let's investigate it. I think that sounds like a decent plan. I'm also going to go quiet on the load screens because it makes my cuts easier. It makes it so that I, if, if the game crashes, it makes it so that I can cut it out and fix it better. But it looks like it didn't crash on us. So happy day, Kalu Kalei. We found our way, however, to a... Wow, we just got a big old chug right there. I don't know if it was still loading assets or what happens. Take the tricycle. We can make it into a battle cycle. We can put like spikes on the wheels and then we can put like a lance on the front of it. And then we can just run into our enemies with our massive three-wheeled justice. That guy seems like his plans went awfully awry. Hmm. You're not going to climb out from under there, are you, when I try to grab this toolbox, huh? If you do, I will no longer love you, zombie. Can I look through the window? Can I do that? No. The window is not a lookable thing that we can do. Hold on, let me see if maybe the facing. Okay, so I can't look in through that window. What about this back one? Will this one work? I honestly don't know what we're, what we're up against here. It could be anything and everything. It looks like we're in some kind of residential sector, and there's just a random church over here. The door is locked. There could be anything in here is my main problem. Is there any unlocked door? Okay, I don't want to bust in and make a whole bunch of noise, but if I have to, I will. My fear is that there might possibly be like a hundred people waiting in here with firearms, just like... Or at the bare minimum, these corridors... Ooh, okay, so... This is definitely ambush central. Looks like there's children's toys on the floor. Which is dark. My sister had one of those. I think I had one of those when we were kids too, where you like stack the rings by... Ooh, hello! Game system, let's bring it along with us, why not? I mean, we bring the plasma too. This is why I'd get killed in the zombie apocalypse. I'd be like, get the plasma, get the Xbox. Like, what are we, we're running on generator power. I'm like, I don't care, get the Xbox, I can't live without games. If you don't, I'm going to run headfirst into a horde of zombies. And then with my sentient zombie knowledge, I'm going to inform them all of your weakness, like in Land of the Dead. I'm going to be the smart zombie that's like, Mrah! and figures out how to like chew down your fence. Do those say anything? A1299, BF384, CD675. I wonder if there's like a safe around here somewhere that you've got to know the combination for, but that's definitely an arranged sequence. A, B, C, D, E, F. Oh no, that's a 1. A, B, C, D, E. E. Okay, so that's never mind. Bad eyesight. I can't zoom in that far, too. But yeah, something weird's going on with those numbers. They're definitely... The numbers and letters are arranged a little bit weird. Huh. I don't know. I'll stare at it later. Dining room cabinet. There also appears to be some kind of witch's cauldron in the middle of the table. They were doing alchemical brews. This is where Ground Zero was. This is where Patient Zero first came to life. You know there's going to be, like, kid zombies in here or something. Maybe not. Maybe it'll just be free loot. I don't know. Steal all the books from the kid's nightstand because obviously I don't think he's going to need it anymore. A medicine cabinet? Who has... Hmm, maybe they just... I was going to say, who has an who has an epinephrine or, more, or who has an adrenaline shot? But I guess maybe their kid's allergic to something and it's just like a precaution. I knew a guy that kept an EpiPen with him all the time because he had a bunch of like random allergies and things that would just crop up. And so he always kept an EpiPen with him. Never had to use it. I mean, I hung out with him a lot. He was one of my field partners, but eh, 
Never got to use the EpiPen. To be honest, I'm a little disappointed. Stabbing somebody with an EpiPen seems really, really epic, where you're like, Oh my god! Live, damn you! And then you just, like, slam it into their thigh. I don't know, it always seems pretty epic on TV. Just take that. There we go. We do not need the worm. Can we use the worms as bait, though? That's the thing that I would kind of wonder. I mean, you can use those little, like, they're mealworms. You can use them to feed your lizards, too. Whichever you prefer. Feeding your lizards or, you know, as bait. I wouldn't eat them. That's how I would use them anyways. I'd use them as bait. Alright, so we have to start off the combat if we want to get the... A failed survivor. I guess you could kind of count every zombie as a failed survivor. <laughs> if you wanted to be like... If you wanted to be clever about it. What? Oh, your gun's equipped? Don't equip your gun. We don't need that right now. Alright, so stat... We definitely... I think I should probably use more blunt weapons. There we go. They definitely seem to do a lot more damage to zombies. And I think people had mentioned in the comments that blunt weapons do better against zombies. And edged weapons do better against real life humans. I don't think I agree with that dichotomy. I think that blunt weapons should be equally useful against humans. You actually become more resilient when you become, become a zombie. So, you know. I, I get why they did it for rock, paper, scissors gameplay. I get it. It's just, eh. Not something that... I would have done. I would have made, but I guess it's the way to keep edge weapons useful. If you're thinking about it from a balanced perspective, you have to like do kind of the rock, paper, scissors things, I guess. Otherwise, nobody would run edged weapons for anything. I would just make it so that edged weapons puncture armor. That's how I would fix it, is that armor is far more effective versus blunt than it is versus pointed or something like that. These guys are sort of arranged in a poopy way. Maybe we'll search the church. Yeah. So let's lurch to search the church real fast. Oh, the door is open. Oh, that does not bode well. What's going to happen here? Something weird is going to happen here. You know it and I know it. Churches are never good in zombie flicks. Anytime you go into a church, weird shit happens. Okay, let's cut the... I'm going to break the door real fast, but what I'm going to do is I'm also going to break off combat in case any of these zombies heard it. Let's check. The zombies will investigate from time to time. Okay. And there's nothing worse than having like 10 zombies show up when you're already fighting somebody with like a shotgun or something. And so you've got like a bunch of minor threats, and then all of a sudden you've got like this dude with a boomstick too, making the situation even worse. The toilet? Oh, toilet paper. Okay, yeah, we could use toilet paper. Sanitary items are important. I really don't feel like forming my own little crusty stalactites on my butt cheeks while we're out here trying to survive. I I would prefer basic creature comforts. Toilet paper is one that I have trouble doing without. We want to watch for that door to open. Oh, it's locked. Never mind. They can't get in here. Rotten fruit inside the desk. I can tilt the screen a little bit, I think, like so. You can do that by holding down the control key and going to the top and the bottom of the screen. I don't know if there's another way to do it. Oh, you can also do it by holding down middle mouse. Okay. They probably explained that on one of the tutorials, but, you know. Splattercat being who he is, I was probably staring at the sun or, you know, chewing on a light switch or doing any of those things I used to do. I've never chewed on a light switch. I was just trying to think of oh-so-random funny objects that you could chew on, licking windows and all that fun stuff. Let's crack this open. We should be able to get it open with two swings. I'm slightly worried about what's going to happen right here. They are all going to investigate. Whoa, they got over here quick style. That didn't count as an attack for me, did it? Nope. Am. How did they, did they teleport over here? That was crazy. They got over here super fast. So it looks like we've got a couple different enemies that we've got to deal with. I think what I would prefer to do is maybe have Joel stick with the pistol. Oh, he's not loaded. Okay, so reload. No. That's not going to do it. Okay, well then what I'll have Joel do... So he'll stab that zombie, then he'll step back over to here. And then we will bypass the turn so that she can get in, although it's going to cost her a bunch of AP to get there. And then we can get our hammer time on and try and handle this zombie. Now, twiddle time will have his moment to shine. Okay, he's going to make two out of his three. I'll take that. I'll take that. Not too terrible. He's going to be armored. The nice thing about the combat taking place right here is that it blocks them in the doorway, which is what I was trying to do anyways. That's why I broke off combat and tried to move everybody is because I was hoping we could break off the combat and then kind of get it to a more advantageous position. The hit rates on the zombies seem to be so much higher than the hit rates for my characters. That's just like a little thing that 
has become apparent. They seem to hit a lot more than I do. I don't know. Now the problem here is that I can't really get her... Okay, so there we go. That's what I wanted. That does put her at risk. But I think we can finish this zombie on this turn, assuming we don't get a bunch of random misses. I'm also going to move him to right there to protect her. And then we'll take the 90% right there. Although this church is filled to the brim with dead guys, so... Unfortunately, I you can't look through windows or anything like that. That's a small change that I would actually prefer is that you might be able to look through windows and figure out where things are at, kind of make your life a bit easier. So how do I make reloading happen? So you set basic. So how do I reload in combat? That's very, very strange. Like the reload icon comes up, but nothing happens. Just keep, yeah, he can't really hurt you, so just keep blocking the doorway with your girth. With your amazing bulletproof vested girth. Oh, I need to figure out how to reload. Oh, he's out of bullets. Okay, so that's why it's not reloading. I've got bullets on other people, but given our inability to pass items in the previous episode, which I'm sure somebody probably explained how to do in the comments by now, but... Cigarettes. Alright. Oh, wow. Okay, so... That is a troublesome amount of zombies. How do I want to deal with this? We're at the point right now where extended combat can really kind of lead to bad things happening. I don't suppose that I have anything I can equip to make my life a little bit easier. Doesn't look like it. I wish that you could just drag that onto characters. I mean, I don't... I need to give bullets to my cop, unfortunately. Oh, he has a claw hammer? Equip that for right now since we're killing zombies. Everybody, if you've got a claw hammer or any type of blunt weapon, now is the time. Okay, he doesn't, but now that we've got two blunts, it makes our... No! I don't want it to be your turn. Wait. What? So he does have ammo. So why wouldn't he... Oh, you've got to put it in the item slot. Oh, okay. Makes sense now. And there it is. That would be the explanation I was searching for. So I need to get them all back into this hallway. And my goal for right now... This hallway is kind of janky, but... If I could, actually, I might be able to bait him through, like, right here by breaking this door. That might work. That doesn't seem like a bad plan. Make some noise and see if we can get some zombies to come after us. Yeah, there we go. And that's all that I really need, is I just need this doorway to be blocked. Now, I can take them and we can swing around this way, hopefully. I mean, there are a lot of zombies in here, so everything's sort of tentative right now, but... Hmm. I'm gonna step back by one so he has to waste an AP at the bare minimum. In fact, this zombie might get in his way if we get really lucky. I don't know if it has the AP, though. There we go. Perfect. A dumb move by the AI has made our life that much easier. He's doing that weird, like, power-up Dragon Ball Z thing over in the corner. He's like, ah! Insert 10 more episodes of that occurring. I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, but even I have to admit, yes, indeed, there is a lot of, like, charging up and random stuff happening in that show. All right, so I'll move her to right here, maybe to act as bait for a little bit, while he hangs out right here and hits the enemy. Oh, my God, such better attack damage. Such better attack damage. Okay, I'm going to step back to here, which is going to force that zombie to use up a bunch of AP in order to get at us. He may still get to attack, I'm not sure. The noise should draw more zombies, which is once again something that I was planning for. I just didn't want to have to walk into the middle of this room and have them all surrounding me while I tried to clear them out. I feel like there was a better crowd control strategy here that we could employ. These two will go over here. Over here, he's got an 85% chance. Ooh, 60 damage. Jesus, man, you're an animal. Alright, oh, he can't carry any more loot, so that means we got to switch to Joel for our looting responsibilities after this. Either way, we're going to be headed back to base after this, so it'll be okay. 
I think we're just about at the end of the episode anyways. We just gotta clear out these remaining zombies and make sure that everything's alright. I don't like their positioning in the room right now, but I think I can deal with it. Alright, so there's 38. And there's the kill. Oh, it regroups them after combat too. That's unfortunate. Okay, so everybody... Everybody just wait outside, honestly. Just come back out here, and then I'll take you off follow mode. No, don't wait in the door, because then I can't walk by you. There we go. The game needs in Fallout, there's a right click you can do on somebody that's blocking a doorway, and it makes them get the hell out of the way. I wish they would put that in this game. It's a very, very useful key that I actually used an insane amount of times when playing Fallout. I wish there was something else like a break right here to get these guys to notice me, but I don't know. Let's loot these right here. Okay. Hey. Loot number one. I can't tell. Okay, so there's a smelling corpse and a female corpse. The smelling corpse, it's weird that it's still smelling even after death. Alright, so we'll drop him right over there. Let's bring back the main character since he's got the most armor. Hopefully there's like trade opportunities and things too. Okay, and so now we walk up right behind here. And we get the first attack. Yeah, there it is. Get out of here, zombie. And so zombie having been dealt with. Will now walk up on us and hopefully are the main character. Twiddle time to Boggin will take care of the final zombie that's up in the way. And then is there anything like across the street or is this just like a small subdivision type region? Looks like a subdivision. 70% chance seems okay to me. Let's just take some swings. Yeah, get some hacks in there. Oh man. You had one job. You had one job, man. You had one job. Can you make that shot from there? What if you move to there? What if you also move to there? There we go. Just help out a little bit. Hopefully that gunshot doesn't bring all the zombies out from over here. It is possible. Let me go investigate and check real fast. Okay. Zombies aren't going to investigate. I'm going to break the episode off right here, right before we loot. My name is Splattercat. Thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dead State. There are things we need to do when we get back home, namely turning off the generator seems to be a big deal. I didn't realize the generator was just on by default. And so we need to fix that. I thought they just used a flat amount of fuel every day and you just like had to deal with that and that was just part of your life. I guess that's not the case, so we need to save our fuel. I'm going to turn off the generator, which I know some people have probably been losing their minds over. And then once we do that, we should be good to loot. I'll see you on the next episode.